Victor, would you be so kind as to introduce the tune we just played? Yeah. Uh, if that's um, introducing it at that point, or uh, uh, retroactively uh, tell them what it was? <laughs> should, I, should I tell the little story about it? That would be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, a little bit of uh, music business reality. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you know, because, um, OK, granted, we love to play. You know, we, we play for the love of it. But we also do this for a living, too, you, you know, which is also the bottom line. And then there's, there's business. Okay, now, years ago, guys would write tunes, and, and, um, and you know, the, the producer or whoever, you, you know, would go to them and, and, and say, you know, um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you $50 cash money right here. Um, um, all you have to do is just sign, sign here that says that, that you're writing your publishing rights all over to me. But, but I'm going to give you fifty dollars. You, you know, so imagine like maybe in in 1950. Well, well, fifty dollars is still a lot of money to me. You know, imagine, <laughs> fifty dollars, you know, cash money right here. You know, just sign, just, just, just sign here. And so what happened was they would sign away their uh, composer's rights for it, not knowing that, you know, it just so happened that, you know, the record sold a million copies, you know, <laughs> and cha-ching, went to the bank like a big dog, you know. Okay, so <laughs> luckily for my generation, when I came along, you know, our, our elder guys, the, you know, our mentors, they say, man, don't go for the book, you know, you don't, don't do it, you know. So, so fast forward it. I recorded this tune with a household name. <laughs> I'll, I'll say a household name. And, and um, I was lucky enough to have this wonderful, motherly uh, a music lawyer. Her name was uh, 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 Judy Berger. She comes from a whole dynasty of lawyers, you, you know, you know, Long Island Jewish, you, you know, Victor, you, you know. <laughs> uh, and, and, and so she would, she would pump me up to, to, to stand up, you, you know, for, for my rights. So we record this record, you know, with this household name, you know, with my tune on it. And um, I called Judy. I said, I got another tune recorded, Judy. She said, OK, call the, the, the producer and have him you know, uh, uh, give you the, 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 the record license number. And you know, we'll proceed from there. So I kept calling the record producer. And, and he, he, um, he never returned my calls. You know, so, so finally, I called the, the household name. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, you know, uh, uh, you know, so and so hasn't, you know, returned my calls, you know. So he says to me, he says, well, I thought for giving a drummer an opportunity to get a, a song recorded, it would go into my publishing company. Uh, oh my God. So, so you know, there's that that pregnant pause. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 thanks to to. My, she, she was so beautiful, my music lawyer. She, she had pumped me up you know, so much to, to stand up for myself. I, I, it just came out without me thinking about it. And I said, well, you know, so-and-so, this, is <laughs> this isn't the first time me as a drummer. <laughs> uh, it's not the first time I've gotten a tune recorded. And, and I proceeded to tell him, David Sanborn recorded three of my tunes and he sells a lot more records than me. <laughs> you, you know, so 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 it was one time that I that actually stood up for myself and it went into my publishing company. You know, so 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 that's the reason that this tune has has special business meaning. <laughs> So before we play another tune, uh, do we have any questions out front? <laughs> Can I ask a stupid question? The, the, only, uh, the, the only stupid question is the one you don't ask. Okay, <laughs> I'll ask one then. Um, 
you know, I noticed that in the middle we there was a pause where you stopped playing and um, everybody started clapping. Does that interrupt the uh, flow of the music, or was that interruptive at all to have to hear an audience clap in the middle? The, the, the applause. The applause. <laughs> Applause That's never never bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> any, any any time, you know, bring it on, bring it on. You know. We're very needy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even even if it's deafening. <laughs> it is sort of audience protocol uh, in a jazz context to, uh, if at minimum to. Uh, applaud at the end of the solo. Um, it's very different from Western classical music where not only do you not applaud during something, but you also have to be hip enough to know, oh wait, this is just the end of the movement and the piece isn't over yet, so I should apply it. Uh, I mean, it, was, it was a transformative experience for me when I was a teenager and started playing in uh, primarily African-American environment, musical environments and went from going with my parents to Western classical concerts and trying to not cough and sit on my hands to like play in a lick and I hear someone, come on, play the blues, Noah! <laughs> <laughs> and, and in all seriousness, that was one of the things that led me to pursue this music because of that community um, engaged, interactive aspect of, of making it. Yeah. <laughs> Any other? Yes? So do you always have a discrete beginning and an end? Or if somebody's in an especially good groove, uh, do you add an eight here? Or do you, you know, do you build in and then just communicate with each other and say we're, we're going to take it to the head and finish it up? So uh, I'm going to back up a second for those who are a little less hip than this gentleman. Uh, <laughs> um, the, or, um, in terms of knowledgeable about the way these things work. So there's a, um, uh, there's a, because you're all plenty hip, but, um, so if we look at the chart too, I wanted to say it's a, there's 32 measures of music in there. And um, each time we, uh, each time somebody takes a solo, it's not necessarily predetermined how long we're going to solo for, but it's almost certainly going to be an increment of 32 measures. So uh, it's not decided, but it's at any point when we get to the end of what's called a chorus, once through the form of the tune, we one of two things is going to happen. Either we're going to keep so assuming we're not lost. Um, <laughs> either either whoever's soloing is going to keep going, or or they're going to pass the baton to whatever the next thing is. So for example, when we were doing the trading back and forth between myself and Victor, I thought we might do that twice through the form. We got to the end once, and he played this beautiful phrase that made it clear that he was concluding, and I saw that he was picking up the brush. I'm like, okay, we're moving back to the melody. And uh, um, so it's kind of both. It's, it's spontaneous, usually, unless there's some external structure, you know, if I'm playing in a performance where there's a really tight time limit, I might predetermine that stuff to make sure that uh, I'm on top of that. But, so it's, in this case, improvised, but improvised with certain statistically likely outcomes, and any time one of those outcomes might happen, we're all ready for whichever of those things. So we wouldn't, you know, 19 bars into those 32 decide, okay, I'm done, Henry, you got it. <laughs> um, yes? Um, I'd rather hear you guys play than hear us talk, so oh. if we're done. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to do both, so is, is, can you form that in the Facebook question? <laughs> <laughs> Such as, would you please play another tune? <laughs> Right off. So, uh, so I guess we've got a request. Uh, Victor, do you want to introduce this next one? Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, um, this next tune I wrote. It was it, it was a self-imposed homework assignment. 
you know, um, I was at a rehearsal with Kenny Barron, and who, who um, has recorded several of my tunes. And, and just in conversation, you know, he said, he said, Victor, uh, I noticed that you don't really write from the, the two five concept. Okay, what's the two five concept? I mean, for, for those of you who aren't, aren't you, you know, musicians, there's a, okay, it, there, it, it, it deals with harmony, you, you know, um, on this like one chord, two chord, three, four, five, six, seven, the according to the notes on the piano. Uh, um, um, and and there, are, uh, there are harmonic polarities that, that, that give a pull to a cadence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so um, uh, a lot of music is written with those kind of uh, two, five, one polarities. And so I said, so I said, well, well I, guess, I guess I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so I, I decided to go home and write a tune, <laughs> you know, based off the two five concept. And, and, and this is the tune, you, you know. And when I brought it in to Kenny Barron, and he played it, he recorded it, and, 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 and he kind of, you know, he, he was a professor at Rutgers University, you know, it was like, like, okay, you get an A. That's the best tune we've got. What's the title of the tune? Oh, now, hey, it's me you're talking to. Yeah. Which, uh, did that part of it, uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> life, life. Um, 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 the inspiration or, or the trigger or the catalyst, whatever. Uh, um, um, I was kind of bumping heads with the girlfriend at the time, and and um, so I had the beginning part of it that kind of launched the tune. It's like, hey, it's me you're talking to. Let's be friends since we're through. No fighting left to do. Did she know that it was about her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 We've got a couple of seats over here. If uh, those in the wings, uh, you're welcome to come in and grab a seat on this end. Uh, two, uh, uh, uh.
those of you who are uh, stuck in the wings, there still are a few seats over here. So, and friendly people uh, uh, adjacent to do it that much. <laughs> yes, Victor, what is your question? I'll be interested if, if the audience feels the same as I do, or most musicians do, that, um, that you know, CDs and records, radio is great, but there's nothing like hearing it live. And so yeah. live. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, and, and when I was 13, my, my, my teacher took me to see Count Basie with Sonny Payne, you know, when I was in 1963, when I was 13 years old, and um, my feet haven't touched the ground since. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, um, to, be, to be in the room, you, you know, to visually see them, you, you, you know, you know, see the sweat on their faces, you, you know, see them grimace to try to go for something and, and feel the vibrations of, of, of the music. Uh, um, um, to, to, um, you know, CDs are great, but, but live uh, uh, take it to another level. That's the reason um, uh, it means a lot to me to see people show up. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, that, that's the, 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 the beauty about this art form, you, you know, because um, it, 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 it's so much part of the job description that, that even if our lives depended on it, we couldn't play a tune again the same way as we did it before. You, you know, it, it's kind of built into the art form, which to me is a beautiful part of us. It keeps it fresh, you, you, you know. You know, there's certain elements, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, okay, we're playing this tune. You know, okay, yeah, I'm playing this tune. It has a melody, yeah, I'm playing the melody. But, but then we get to improvisation, and that's always going to be different, you, you know. Uh, uh, every day is a new day, you know. Uh, um, and, and that keeps it fresh. And, and it keeps it a challenge, too. You, you know, because, cause, um, you know, there, there have been many times that, that I, I wish I could say, oh man, you should have heard me last night. I was <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh. I'm just going to point out before before we take your question uh, on a logistical note that was also um, the first time the three of us had ever played that tune together. So uh, wow. uh, if, we, if we played it another different times, it would still be different every time. But then there's also the the different intersections of uh, of people that. Uh, so we had a question back there, and then one of I was just wondering what one of your favorite performances was, and where was it, and who was it with? One of my favorite performances? Okay, uh, all, all different ones for, for um, um, different reasons. Um, um, I remember the first time that I played the Village Vanguard. You, you know, I called my boys back in Omaha, Nebraska. I said, hey man, I'm playing the Village Vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, um, uh, um, uh, playing with Dexter Gordon, uh, 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 doing with uh, doing the, there's this record called Sophisticated Giant that um, I did with Dexter Gordon that um, that I almost didn't get on, you, you know, because at the time, I, you know, I was still a young blood in New York, you, you know, uh, 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 what they what they, what they call them on um, NCIS, Proby or whatever. <laughs> or whatever, you, you, you know, and, and um, they, they, they didn't know if my experience at that time um, uh, was that I could cut it, <laughs> you, you know, to be frank. Uh, uh, but but um, Woody, Sean, Dexter Gordon, they, they, they lobbied for me, 
you know, to, to be on it, and, and I was able to, to the, I did direct it, you know. Um, it, it's one of my proudest moments in life, you, you know, I was, I don't know, I was 26 years old, you know, and um, there's, there's another part to that, you know. Um, so, at, you, know, you know, while I'm sweating bullets, wondering if I'm gonna get on, be able to play on this record, you, you know, I finally get the green light, and, and my mom calls me, and she said, "Yeah, son, your your little sis, your little sis is getting married." And I said, "Oh yeah, well that's great." You know, and I said, "What is it?" And she told me the date, and, and there was this pregnant pause. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and she said, she said, uh, what, what, "What's wrong, son? You, you know, we'll buy the ticket for you if you don't have enough money." And I said, "No, mom, it's not that." She said, "Well, what is it? I have to do a record date." He says, okay, you gotta do a record date, but this is your little sister getting married, you, you know, and all this. She says she's not getting married unless you come home. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I said, and I said, well, you know, it's kind of an important record date. She said, she says, well, who's it with? And, and I said, well, it's, it's, it's with Dexter Gordon. And she said, let me get back to you. <laughs> Sister, and you believe they changed the wedding date? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that's, that's, that's what I'm, I'm really proud of. Okay, and so we have one more question and then we'll play another tune. Yes? Uh, I just wanted to say that was a fabulous tune. Thank you. Oh, um, I hope you don't mind. My daughter, it reminded her of Curious Story. She wanted to dance. Oh, no, no. See, 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 that's the thing. Back in the day, people used to dance to this music. You know, I, I mean, it goes hand in hand. So that's the reason when I saw that, I said, yeah, maybe we're getting back the way it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> if, if it evokes a memory, it's a uncontrollable response to be physically uh, involved in music, that, is, that means we're doing something right. <laughs> I'm glad. I hope I didn't disrupt anyone. Quite the contrary. May have been egg song. Real. Good. Um, so I'm really excited to play this next hit. So let's, let's do it. Do you want to do huh? want to introduce the picture? We're gonna we're gonna play. It. In, in case you haven't noticed the trend here, we're playing all Victor Lewis <laughs> material today, and uh, this next one is a tune called Big Girls. Let's just hear this. <laughs> Two, one, two.
motivation behind the name of that sign? Okay, um, um, it's all about um, in relationships, and, and I kind of, I kind of like tell a story you know, that goes along with this. That that the do just between being being um, her dad and her son, you, you know, the gamut of, of the emotions and everything, and, and um um. Um, and, and, and the same vice versa, you, you know. Um, um, and so I, I, I like to tell a story, you, you know, where, where you know, okay, you and your lady, you know, you're on, on a date, and, and, and you go, you go to the men's room, and and, and, and you come back out, and, and, and there's just some dudes messing with your lady, right? and so, and so, and so, 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 first thing you do is you lay for a minute. You, you know, because you know that, that she would want you to say, no, give me a chance to take care of handle this myself. And so, so you know, you're laying back, and, and but the cat, he, you know, he's, he, he wants to be hard-headed, you, you know. So, so he, he's not listening, so, so you have to step, step up, you know. So one thing leads to another. And there's a little altercation, you, you know. So okay, you, you know, you you defend you and your lady's honor, and and and, and you two step off into the night arm in arm, and then and then then when you get home, you, you say, "Oh, baby, he hit me." <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's kind of like you know two roles, you, you know, and, and so, so it's it's about it's about the grown woman that still has a little girl in her, you, you know. So I call them big girls, you know. Um, when approaching like the composition process, what do you start with? You start with the melody or like chorus, then the melody. Or well, that, that's a good question. Um, um, it, it comes from various triggers. Uh, um, um, this tune, uh, in, uh, in particular, was the first tune that um, that I started writing without being at, at, at the keyboard. You, you know, I was on I was on a plane. You, you know, and so sometimes I'll, I'll I'll hear a melody. Sometimes I'll hear a, a, a chord progression. Sometimes sometimes it starts from from a groove. You know, that I want to play on the drums. I want to build something around it. You, you know, so 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 this tune I heard, you know, and so so I'm, I'm on a plane, you, you know, and, and and these were back in the days, you know, cassette players, remember those? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, and and I had what they call a, a pressman, which is, you, you could record on it, and so so I'm on a plane, and so and so I. I I hummed into the microphone the, the first phrases of, of, of the melody, and then right behind it, I hummed the bass line that I wanted against that, you know. And so, and so when I did get to the keyboard, I, I you know, Colored with the numbers, you know, kind of, you know, build in the dots, you, you know. So, so it, it, it for, for me, it comes from different, different triggers, you, you know. Yeah. Uh, um, um, the best one is just whichever way it comes, that it comes inspired, you, you, you know, that 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 you have this, you know, that you really feel the tune, that that it has, that it has um, a statement that you want. That, that, that you want to say, or, or you know, if it's about if it's about somebody, or or, or something, or or uh, a purpose or a cause, you, you know, or or just um, a bad day, you know, you know, something that that gives it impetus, you know, of, of inspiration. Um, so I want to ask a question, kind of in uh, your general direction, but in your um, what is your physical relationship to music? As in, like, um, when you're playing, what aspects of your body are affecting your playing? What aspects of your playing are affecting your body? And how does that kind of work together? Oh, um, um, 
Well, it, it's um, <laughs> personally, the, the, the older I get, uh, uh, um, the discussion takes longer. <laughs> 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 Forty years ago, you, you know, when I was a young spider monkey, uh, um, 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 uh, before I had back surgery a couple years ago, you, you, you know, I, I that worked worked out. You know, just, you know I, my heart is saying, yeah, this is what we want to do this next split second, and and, and body says, okay, bring it on. But, you know, but now now I have to have a short discussion with with, with my legs. <laughs> hey man, how y'all feeling today? <laughs> We, we want to do this, you know, some days, some days the body will say, sure, bring it on. Some days the body says, ain't going to happen. <laughs> Pick something else. <laughs> so so the, the discussion it takes longer, you know, but it's a real tandem uh, uh, venture uh, um, with one uh, um, major uh, element in the circle, the heart. The, the, the heart triggers triggers mm -hmm. the, 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 the mental intellect to to express something and um, um, and, and hopefully uh, uh, what the heart triggers that you mentally decide how you're going going to try to uh, bring to fruition hopefully the facility that you worked on over the years can can handle mm -hmm. pulling it off you know but but it's a real team effort you, you know. You know, but, but but you have to uh, include the heart and the spirit in, in that in, in that little circle of, in the conversation. You know, you, you know my, my my spirit never has any problems with 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 anything. You, you know, you know the spirit is saying, yeah, let's do this, let's do this, Victor. You, you know, and 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 you know my intellect will say, okay, we think we can handle it. So then we get to the body, and the, the body says, did you think it through? <laughs> I'd like to uh, riff on that a little bit and then come to the but, uh, um, As someone who has had to, and so for those of you who <coughs> I uh, was born with a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which makes all of my joints particularly uh, hypermobile and vulnerable to injury, which is why I wear splints on all my fingers. It's not just that I like to um, In fact, I don't actually like to but uh, I mean on myself. Uh, it's beautiful on all of you. Uh, and so from a pretty early in my musical development, I started having those conversations uh, with my body that Victor's talking about, and, uh, and I completely agree that it's a matter of there being a spirit that you're trying to communicate and connect to, and I mean, in a sense, this is what transcendence is. It's like you, you've got this substance that you're trying to touch, and you're an earthly being who is thus inherently capable of completely enveloping that substance but you just push for as much of it as you can get and hold on to it as tight as you can. And, uh, and you, just you try to make the negotiation as successful as possible, essentially. And one of the things on a really practical level that's, um, you could say, forgiving about playing jazz as compared with any fully notated music, um, European classical music being the most obvious example, is that, um, that negotiation can result in adaptations to what you play. You know, and whether it's, you know, the, one of my uh, heroes, a pianist named Horace Parman, who uh, had polio as a child. And uh, if you, there's not a lot of great video footage of him, but there's enough that you can see. He basically had use of um, Three? Two fingers on two his fingers. right hand. He had his left hand, and, that, and it wasn't even he could control those two fingers. It was kind of like, a claw that if the interval is right on the piano you could use for something. And those of you who are jazz fans have probably heard Horace's song uh, Mingus Aum or uh, uh, Doing All Right, that's the Gordon record. And you don't 
you don't hear impairment. You just hear a musical concept that's brought to uh, really organic fruition. And you know, if you're playing Rachmaninoff, the notes are all on the page, and either you're playing all of them or you're not playing all of them. Either you're playing them right and fast enough or you're not. And uh, if if instead what you're trying to reach is a certain substance and communicate something, you know, you've got the thesaurus. There's there's more than one way you can communicate that. And uh, um, if I, I I certainly don't think I would still be playing if if I were a, a concert pianist and my job was to play these notes in this way. Um, but part of that dance for me, that dialogue, is just figuring out what my body can produce, what my spirit is going for, and what, what's going to find the most satisfying uh, uh, melody of those things. Um, Delane, would it be, and Doug, would it be terrible if we played the other tune and then took your questions? If, if, if the question is, is going to lose its, uh, lose its, uh, what was it then? I'm going to take that. So, no, but, okay, you, you two are next in queue, but, uh, <laughs> But I, I'm itching to play this one. This is a tune of Victor's called. I, I don't even think I can say it right. So. Uh, okay. The, uh, the, 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 the title is spelled E E E Y Y E S S. And and and, and what, what it is, it, it's um, you, you know, it, it's two two seconds left in the game. <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> he does a slam dunk, you, you know, right at the, at, at the buzzer, and everybody goes, yes! And that's kind of reflected um, in the tune that, that after we start the vamp, before the melody, you'll hear us go, bam! So that's Michael Jordan. You know, you know, slam dunk, you know. Uh,
professionals. We had uh, Ashley Durkin and uh, Okay, I was just thinking about you talking about your own internal negotiations and everything. That at the same time you you have to be listening so closely and reacting at the same time to what the other musicians are doing. And they should really, it's a lot. It, 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 yeah, it, it takes more than a notion. You got that right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I spent I spent a long time. Um, learning how to hear myself, and, and then, then I spent even longer time learning how to hear everybody else along with hearing myself, you, you, you know, because it, 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 it's, it's a team ball effort, you, you know, and, and so that means you gotta, you gotta listen to what you're doing, you gotta listen to what they're doing, and, and, and all, all, all this like calibrates from split second to split second. You, you, you know, it, it's um, to, to me, it's like an NBA basketball team. You, you, you know, because because he'll play something that makes me do this, which makes him do that, which makes me do this, which makes him do that. You, you know, and and um, and, and and the ball gets passed around. You, you know, and and um, and, and 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 it's just like what the coach says. You know, it's like you had the shot, man. Why didn't you take the shot? You, you know, because it's about any, any one of us triggers the next. The next bright moment, you, you know, you know, uh, or, or the coach says, "You didn't have the shot, man. Why'd you take the shot, man?" <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you just laid back, man. You, you know, you know. But it's it, it's a real team all effort in listening to each other. You know. I wonder if you feel this way, Victor. But I find uh, that uh, in terms of the physical negotiations with the instrument, playing with other people who are interactive and inspiring actually makes that easier. Like sometimes afterwards I'm a little more beat up because I went somewhere because, you know, because the flow. whatever. <laughs> um, but, but in the moment, it's sort of less about that kind of inward directed um, negotiation and more about, oh man, music is going here, I gotta go with it. And yeah. so it becomes a lot less, uh, if you're really tuned in, I find it becomes a lot less calculated, more just, um, uh -huh. Something is happening, and you become part of it. Yeah, it, it's just like I um, I have a hard time thinking about what to play until I start playing with these cats. Then you know, it's like, oh yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, one more question. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, uh, my uh, cut him off before he asked the last minute. <coughs> Yeah, um, I'm wondering over the years as a musician if you found yourself in kind of musical uh, like a slump or like ruts, um, and if it's like even if it's just a day or weeks or months, what do you what have you done if you found yourself in those times to kind of get yourself out of there and like really feel it again? Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, over the years, man, I've had quite a few like like um, low air. <laughs> inspirational period, if you know. And uh, um, usually what, what, what I do is try to find s something to listen to that, that, that goes zoom, it, it, you know, that, that, that gets me and raises my vibrations and, 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 and gets my inspiration, you, you know, rebooted. <laughs> uh, um, um, and, and also I've learned over the years to um, to not to not to not fight it, you, you know, and, and and also not not think that that, that it's going to be permanent, you, you know, because I've seen enough cycles go by, you know, and said said oh, okay, say it's it's winter again, <laughs> you, you know, but soon it'll be springtime again, you, you know, so so I've I've seen a lot of cycles go by, you know, um, um in my growth. Uh, I noticed that um, uh, it was kind of just kind of like before you leave one level and go to the next level, there's like a, a no man's land in, in between. At least in terms of myself, when when um when when you know my practice efforts, you, you know I'm trying to be diligent and everything, and 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 I feel you, you know that far you, you know getting to that next level. Um, I would end up 
in no man's land, meaning I'm, I'm already headed to the next level, but I can't play the old way I could. You, you, you know, so so it's, it's like I've, I've uh, 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 like a snake who sheds its skin. You, you can't go back and put it back on again. You, you, you got to live with, with you know. So, so it meant that when that no man's land comes, uh, that, that means now's the time to really persevere and try to get to that next level. You, you know, um, 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 a lot of times because because. Uh, um, we live with ourselves all the time, you, you know, um, um, we don't see growth, we don't see progress, you, you know, because we're with each ourselves every day, you, you know, as opposed to like somebody who heard you two months ago and comes and hears you again, it's, oh man, boy have you improved, and you say, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't notice it, you know, because it was a gradual thing, you, you know, um, and so, um, uh, I had a talk with a, a great drummer named Grady Tate, you know, great drummer, great singer, and, and he, he, he told me that he noticed with himself that uh, um, kick-ins would, would, would happen about every six months. He said he would be working on something and, you know, you know he's not getting it yet, you know, he's working on it, he's not getting it yet, you know. And, you know, he worked on it six months or eight, eight months and then all of a sudden, boom, it would kick in. You, you know, just, just when he thought that, you know, his, you know, his, his efforts were, were fruitless, you know. You know um, so, so during, during those frustrating times, uh, uh, trying to stay calm, <laughs> you, you know, uh, 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 don't, don't, don't go out and start leaning on the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, um, you know, give it, give it a couple of nights sleep and and a good meal and, and listening to, to some good music and, and it'll kick back in, you, you know, yeah. But believe me, I know the feeling. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have one back there and then one up here, so. Uh... Oh, I'll pass, take your music. So, I was wondering if you had any experience playing the other style of music, and if you think it's necessary for like, young jazz musicians to it's, play other styles. It, it, it is supremely necessary to play all styles. If you, you know, um, 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 because uh, um, a big mistake. You're um, um, like your your hipster jazz wannabe. Big mistake that he can make is to think that he can only get the, the tools that he needs from only doing hip or playing hip stuff. But that's not true, you, you know. Um, um, okay, you know, um, you know, I did a lot of funk records. Uh, um, um, I, uh, I played with, with belly dancers. I've, I've, I've done bar mitzvahs. Uh, uh, I've, I've, done, I've done polka gigs, Whoa. you know. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, timpani in the orchestra. You, you, you know, um, um, and, and um, for example, okay, with this music, the dialogue, you, you know, from, from moment to moment, you, you know, and so, and so you want to be, when he goes, you know, that, that, that dialogue, call and response. And so one would never think that I got great, <coughs> great training for that from playing with the circus. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you know, one would think, the circus? Are you kidding? Well, let me tell you. Okay, now, you got the band, the clown. You, you know, the clown's coming out. He's, he's got his little pole, and, he, and he's, on, he's on the tightrope, and he's going he's gonna to do his clown act, you, you know. And you know, what it means is that he's going to do something stupid to make some, everybody laugh. And so the band is playing a waltz. So the drummer's job is to watch, watch the clown. And when he goes like that, you have to go, you have to go. You, 
you know, and, and, and get back to the waltz in, in between. And so, so that, that gave me a lot of practice on, on, on spontaneous, you know, reacting. You, you know, and so, so I, I say to my students, I say, I say, take every gig, no matter what it is. It, it, it just all goes into your, to your bag of experience. You know, <clears throat> the more the more you've experienced, you you know, the more the more you know, you, you know, the more you have to choose from. You know, so I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up, sir. You know, yeah. Take every gig. <laughs> until until you reach the point where you've got negotiating um <laughs> it's cool with y'all. We're gonna play one and then we'll take your question and then we'll take your question. Um, this, this is not a particularly clownish song. <laughs> oh I got, okay, I got something to say about this one. Uh, um, um, the name of this tune is The Loss of a Moment. And, and um, it means that, you know, you're going through your day, you know, everything's cool, and then something happens. You get a phone call, or, or you run into somebody on the street, or, or you know, something happens that, that kind of spoils your day, you, you know, you know, ruins the groove. And so this is what this tune is about when, oh man, you know, you, you lost that moment, that good mood that you were in. And um, I, I, I kind of like confessingly tell a story about what I realized was a, a supreme loss of a moment that, that I did get a chance to, 30 years later, to apologize for. And okay, now, when I was a teenager, every gig I got, I got all excited. You know, you know I'm bouncing off the wall. I got a gig, I got a gig, and fun to say, you know, gig, gig. Every gig. <laughs> so, I get a gig playing for another prom on our prom night. <laughs> and, 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 and I go, and to make it worse, me and my stupid excitement, I go to my girlfriend and tell her that I can't take her to the senior high prom because I have a gig. <laughs> that was the loss of the moment. <laughs> and, 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 and so, and so, like thirty years later, at at, at the, you know at a reunion back in Omaha, Nebraska, I, I ran into her. And, and um, I apologize. <laughs> and, 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 and she said, she said, she said, Victor, you know, you know, like they always say, the hindsight is twenty twenty. She said, well, Victor, I, I understand now that you are on a mission, you, you know, and it's, so she forgave me, you, you know, but I, I, I wouldn't advise anybody to. <laughs> You know, I mean, you, you, you know, your 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 high school sweetie. You, you know, tell you can't take it to the prom, man. Uh, that so was is, is that the exception to the take every gig rule? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
you'll be able to hear that it's like one, two, three, four, and that one, two, three, four, one, you'll be able to follow along with that. Um, so one, two, one, two, three. sort of recap the last 45 years of your career. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, the, the big, I mean, you've worked with so many great musicians. Uh, I moved to New York, uh, um, what's the date today? The 12th? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, the 16th of this month will be my 41st anniversary uh, moving to New York. Wow. You, you know, uh, uh, I moved to New York with, with my drum set, the suitcase, of some clothes, and $200. The $200 was gone in a heartbeat. <laughs> you know, 
Uh, um, and, and I just followed, followed guys around in the clubs and, 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 um, and I think, I, I like to think that um, they just felt sorry for me because they saw I was so hungry for the music and decided to just give me a chance. You, you know, and and, uh, and I tried to take advantage of all the chances I got. You know, from 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 Woody. You know, you know, actually, like like um, um, the first gig that I did with Woody, and, and I will admit this, I was so nervous and 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 awestruck. Uh, I, I I say I froze. You you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and lucky for me, it was a weekend, so Friday and Saturday night, and, and I had Saturday night to try to like redeem myself, you know, and, and, and I went home and, and uh, you know, I said, come on, Victor, man, you didn't even play you, man, you, you know, you didn't come all the way to New York just to freeze, you know, freeze up, man, so, so the next night, I, 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 um, I just went in and went for broke because, um, I couldn't have screwed. I couldn't screw it up any worse than I did the night before. And and, and and I just played from my heart, and and that's what left an imprint on Woody. And, and a couple of months later, I find myself doing his record, you know, which is my first record in New York, The Moon Train, you, you know, and, and um, um, you, you know, that led to this and that, you, you know, um, uh, it's it's hard to put in a nutshell, you you, you know, but but um. Uh, I really feel that, that I've been lucky, you, you know, all, all, the, all the, the greats that I got a chance to play with, you, you know, um, um, a lot of them are in heaven now, you, you know, but, but um, uh, that, that's the reason why, why um, I, I, I pump my students, I, I pump anyone who wants to listen about the cats and the legacy who are upstairs from J.J. Johnson, you, you, you know, Dexter Gordon, Woody Shaw, you know, Stan Getz, you, you know, uh, uh, all these people I got a chance to rub shoulders with, and and, um, and, and the things that I learned from them, you, you know. Um, um, and and when I came on the scene, guys used to really believe in what what, what you would call tough love. You, you, you know, they they um, um if, if they felt okay, there were just two ways that 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 you would get it. Either they felt that you weren't worth it, and that you had a a, a bad attitude. You, you know, and, and the next thing you know, you see the bands playing, but they got another drummer. <laughs> <laughs> they just didn't deal, deal with it. Or, or they would pull your coat to something with tough love to say, hey, hey, young blood, you, you need to you need to get this together. And that and that's the, and, and that's the best thing you could get is, is to get like balled out after the gig, man. That means they love you. <laughs> that means you can stay, you know, because you know. Because I mean, this is New York. They just they, they just dial another phone number. Next thing you know, you hear the bands playing somewhere, you know, without you. <laughs> you, you, you know, and so and so. Um, uh, I had a lot of great tough love experiences. You know, um, um, um and, and uh, so so I like to to talk about those cats. You know, you know, since they they're not here to, to speak for themselves. You know. And about how important the, the, the legacy is, and and what and what it did for me, it, you know, um, um, you know, I, I like to say, music, music, I think, uh, um, is the reason I'm not dead or in jail now, <laughs> you know, uh, um, um, <laughs> you, you know, cause, cause it, plus I had a great teacher, and, and every. Every, every year around about mid-May, early May, school's getting ready to get out, you, you know, you, you know, he would say, school's getting ready to get out, huh, Victor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said, what you going to do over the summer? Mm -hmm. Hang out. You know, mm -hmm. hang out. Huh? <laughs> and, and he would say this to me every year. He said, well, um, you might, might practice, might keep you out of trouble. He said this to me every year. And lo and behold, I think it, yeah, when I was 16, I was 16, one of my boys calls me, you, you know, and he says, hey man, you, you, you want to roll with us today? And I said, oh, what y'all getting ready to do? He said, he said, we're going to go out and try to rob this hardware store. <laughs> and I said, I said, 
No, man, I'm gonna stay home and practice. <laughs> Certainly gave me a lot of wonderful, tough love. <laughs> <laughs> 